Dear friends and comrades, a very warm welcome to um, the last plenary session of this really expiring, inspiring convention. I'm Silke Thompson. I'm a member of two of our wonderful um, member parties. I'm a member of the UK Labour Party and the German SPD. And um, my profession is being a spokesperson, a, con a, com a communicator, and that's also my passion. And I'm going to share this um, session. Um, thank you very much for spending your afternoon in workshops. And we have, you have all come up with brilliant ideas around active democracy. And thank you very much for your great feedback from those workshops. We have a really interesting, inspiring panel now. And they're here to discuss the findings um, of those workshops. So without further ado, let me introduce to my left, it's, um, I hope I get it right now, Carlos Paredes, is that right? <laughs> From the Spanish um, real, real Democracy Movement. Thank you, Carlos. Um, the Real Democracy Movement in Spain represents about 200 grassroots organizations. Um, and we have Job Cohn from the Partei from the Arbeit from the Netherlands. Um, Job also held several very high profile ministerial posts and is a former mayor of Amsterdam, if I'm not mistaken. Thank you for coming over. <laughs> we have André Fallot from um, the PS in Belgium, and he's the president of the Chamber of Representatives and also held several high-profile ministerial offices in Belgium in the past. <laughs> Thank you. And we also have Antonio Jose Seguro. Um, he's the leader of the PS in Portugal and also a former minister. So first of all, we, I mean, you have discussed about 12 topics this afternoon in your different workshops. And as I said, thank you very much for your feedback. One really interesting topic um, that I think we, we should pick up first, because we have an alarming amount of party leaders here, is, um, is party reform. And your feedback was quite controversial, it was really interesting because you were basically saying in terms of European transnational parties, your message was we shall not copy national party structures to build the transnational parties. Instead, US party structure, US American party structure is far more appropriate. Who would like to start off to comment? Your, do you want to start off? Well, As party leader, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, I think in the first place uh, it is it is uh, uh, very difficult to uh, to compare the United States of America with uh, the United States of, of Europe. Um, the United States of America, well, they have a tradition of 200 years. We don't have this tradition. Uh, we have, and we are proud of that. We have different uh, languages. We have different uh, cultures. We like that, although it's also uh, uh, difficult. So, um, uh, well, uh, I think it's important that, that more and more uh, we try to have um, um, uh, an, 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 a transnational party like the, 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 the PS is, is now setting up. Uh, the way we, are have, we have to organize it, um, I think on the whole in, in Europe uh, and especially uh, with respect to Europe, uh, we need more democracy. So we have to think about the question how we can democratize uh, the, the, um, uh, the, the PS. Uh, it is necessary that, um, that all our citizens uh, are involved in Europe. So we have to, to democratize Europe as a whole. Uh, and as a result of that, we also have to, uh, to, to democratize uh, the, uh, our, our party. Uh, for example, which is now in, in, in our proposals, that we have one candidate uh, for the president of the European Commission. And I think that's a, that's a very good idea. Uh, of course, it's, um, it's not uh, easy to, uh, to, to, uh, to, uh, to uh, how to organize it, but the idea is good um, if we uh, succeed in having, uh, in the end, a very good candidate. 
And if that is the case, this candidate has to, uh, to go through all the countries, um, telling what, uh, what, what he's all about, what his program is, what our program is. And if we are going to do that, um, well, I think uh, that is a good idea. And well, then you can say, well, uh, in, in all the countries, it's only one candidate and he is uh, Portuguese or he is uh, German or he is French. But yes, well, we have uh, also now we have one uh, um, a, um, um, a chairman of the commission. So that will also be the case. So I'm, uh, I think that it is really worthwhile uh, to, uh, to try this. Let me stop there. André, thank you very much. André, how, yeah, how, are you, how are you going to sell it in the next European elections if you suddenly have, let's say, a German or a Swedish name for this office and people turn around to you during the campaign and say, who? On va pas commencer comme ça. We are not going to start like this. We are not going to start like this. I think that before uh, talking about the elections and the candidates, I think that there is a first indispensable action to conduct in each one of our parties, in each one of our countries, uh, to make sure that the socialist uh, parties are really close uh, to the citizens who are in need. We really need to leave our structures. We lead, need to leave also our uh, debates on institutions. And we need uh, to do away with all sometimes the conflicts that can uh, start between these institutions. And if we want really to focus on these socialist values in Europe. Of course, we have to go through the parties, because otherwise it will be impossible. We really need to structure our action. And maybe we will be very nice here and there for a limited time, but we will never be able to improve our credibility. So I really believe that the transformation of Europe and the transformation of our very technical, bureaucratic institutions, they're really moving away from the population. We should be able to transform them through a strong party of European socialists. And it will only be strong providing or provided that uh, the various activists are available also in each country. They should rely on common values that are sometimes shared with the cooperatives, with the trade unions, with the various organizations that can really transform things into something concrete. People today, the citizens, are really expecting concrete answers. And the key value should be all of our Europe. This is really what is uniting us, the solidarity and the transformation of the society based on solidarity. And uh, should we be able to use this solidarity value, whether we are in the government or in the opposition, it will anyway be very difficult. But I believe that our attitude vis-a-vis -vis these values should not change according to whether we are in the government or in the opposition. This is really what should lead our action. We need to find a common denominator to be close, to be available for citizens, and to work upon a strong European party of socialists. And then maybe we'll be able to speak about organizing elections. And then, only then, we'll try to identify the best candidate. But first, we need to win the elections, and in order to do so, we need strong national parties really working upon these values. So before giving one or two names, you know, whether a socialist is Irish, Spanish, Portuguese, whatever, whatever his or her color, you know, I think that the bottom line is for this candidate to share our basic values. You know, I am an internationalist person. Andres. Thank you very much. Um, you talked about talked a lot about the importance of activists with you know kind of a bottom up approach. So I want to pass this question on to um, Carlos. Um, how do which role do you think transnational European parties can play, and would a U.S. system be really appropriate? Hey, uh, why not? 
first of all, my name is Carlos Paredes. <laughs> Firstly, we think we should uh, improve uh, transparency in management. Uh, uh, citizens need to, to know where the money comes uh, uh, in, and where it goes into the parties if you want to be credible. Secondly, there must be a rotation in the positions. In the case of Spain, we see a paradigm, and it's a perfect example. We had for this uh, elections uh, Rubalcaba and Rajoy for the Socialist and uh, Partido Popular. They've been in political positions for 20 years. And so if uh, you want to be near the citizens, you have to be trained by the citizens. Uh, and what we see in the parties is oligarchs. Uh, and thirdly, you have to give uh, more importance uh, uh, to the activists. You need to have strong activists to be able to decide. Uh, you, can on, you can't go only to the activists when you need a demonstration. Uh, the activists are the ones that need to decide. We have a project uh, to improve democracy. It's called Democracy 4.0 or Liquid uh, Democracy. I'm not going to go into the details. Uh, that project exists. It's a project to improve the democracy in big organizations, and you could apply it in your own party. Who knows? Thank you. Carlos, thank you very much. May I now pass over to Antonio, please? Thank you very much. Thank you for inviting me. Firstly, I think that uh, we absolutely need uh, transparency. I agree with Carlos. In the Socialist Party in Portugal, we have uh, adopted an ethic codes and uh, we put all the revenue declarations, uh, the interest declarations of uh, uh, the managers of the party. And that shows that we trust people and shows transparency. In December, we will put forward uh, a financing uh, proposal for political parties and for um, election campaigns uh, demanding uh, transparency for the political financing activities. I do agree with the colleagues when they say that we need uh, a bigger opening, uh, that we need to see how those parties work. Currently, we have a debate within the party with the activists, uh, with the elite, uh, so that uh, we change uh, the functioning of the party and so that we create the good uh, conditions uh, to accept uh, left-wing people, activists uh, that uh, do not want to occupy positions about that want to participate in the Socialist Party. So I'm talking about principles, but also about about action. We need uh, to implement uh, those actions. Uh, fourthly, I agree with uh, the decision of the PS uh, to put forward a unique candidate for the Commission. But what does that mean? Well, it means uh, to agree with one political program and with one person. If it's only with one person, it's uh, too little. I would like to have a political program with very concrete answers uh, to the crisis. And uh, to be able to uh, draft a political uh, program, who will draft it? Who will elect uh, the representatives of the uh, different governments uh, that are conservatives in their majority or liberals? Or do we have to accept that we need to find another way to elect the president of the executive body of the European Union or the Eurozone? And uh, there, we introduce the issue of the direct election by the citizens uh, um, 
of the maximum body of the European Union. Carlos, can I get back to you, please? We had two working groups this afternoon. Looking, one looked at true democracy in Europe and one looked at new movements. And there was one clear message coming over, basically saying we need to listen to the messages from civic movements because they are at the heart of the core values. So how can we ensure, as political parties, that we need to listen to the messages from civic movements? What they need to do, from my point of view, is to participate with the civil society. The basic issue is that uh, when uh, people get to high positions, uh, they forget uh, uh, the citizens. Uh, and they go to another world, the world of the big managers, uh, the world of the IMF, of uh, a stock exchange, of sovereign debt, and they forget about people. You have to go to the street. You have to speak to the people. You have to ask them what they want. We've seen that uh, the parties have broken the dialogue uh, with people. You don't even listen to your activist, uh, how do you expect uh, to have a dialogue with the citizens? What has happened with the Spanish Socialist Party is shameful. It's shameful what they've done. A party that calls himself a socialist has applied one after another all the cut measures uh, decided by Europe. They told us that it was good for us. This is the democracy that you're defending. This is an elite democracy, a democracy that decides for the others. And when we go to the streets, we say, hey, I am a citizen. You're talking about my pension, about my house, about my family, about my loved ones. And uh, either you condemn them or you try to use us to get to the power. It's a shame. What you have to do is to go to the street, to talk with people, to know what is going on. You have to take the aims of people. If you're able to take and to consider the aims of the people, the citizens will be with you. But if you take a road that is not the road of the society, you'll have a problem, like you're having a problem. You have to listen to people. Less high-level meetings and more meetings with citizens. This is the problem. The high-level meetings, they change uh, the reality. You get into a uh, stock exchange speculation that you're unable to stop. That's the reality of today. Greece, Italy, who's governing there? Goldman Sachs? And that is a, democr um, a democracy. H how can we have the vice president of Goldman Sachs uh, at the head of the ECB? He has certainly played an important role in the speculation that we see today. Have you asked any, uh, peop any, any citizen if they wanted uh, that person at the head of the ECB? Where's the dialogue with the, uh, the citizens? Uh, it's uh, non-existent. That's the problem that you have. Goldman Sachs, Gracias. and can I, um, can I pass the question on to your... Um Well, 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 Carlos, I agree with you for the half. Of course, you have to, to be in your country, and that's what I do every day, in, not every day in the week, once a day in every week. Every Friday I am in the country, and I talk to everybody who wants to talk to me. And I'm not only talking to them, I want to have a dialogue with them. And with the results of that dialogue, I'm making up my mind. And yes, and that's the other half. The other half is indeed having discussions on another level, because that's what politicians also have to do. So it is both ways. 
you have to go into your country, into the local organizations, talking with everyone, everyone who wants to talk with you, having dialogues, and then, go, and then looking for, uh, taking the results and do what you want to do with the results. And one other point, I think that, that the, the socialists, um, we, we started as a movement. And I think, and after the fact that we were a movement, we became a party, a political party. And I think that we have to go back to this movement and that all the members of our party do the same as what I'm doing. Go into the streets, talking to the people, telling them what our ideals are and telling how we are dealing with it. That's the way we should organize it. That's the way we should also um, try to, 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 um, to, 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 to fit in the civil society. So, yes, you're right, but there is more to do for a politician. A Belgian view, please. I fully agree with you, but I don't think that uh, the people in, in the room should be explained about that. No, uh, I'm, I'm sure that we are all convinced of what you said. And then we also have to be cautious because we have to focus on the right target. And here I'm talking as a socialist uh, at the head of the Chamber of Representatives of a democratic country. So we should not miss our point, miss our target. And then the situation can be different from one country to another. A few minutes ago, we were referring to transparency, to uh, the uh, monitoring of income. We have very clear regulations in our country, very strict regulations as to uh, the fact that we cannot uh, have two mandates and that everything has to be monitored, uh, controlled. So we take uh, a lot of measures in, in that direction. So let's be very practical. Let's compare what we have in our different countries and let's take for the socialist family what could be the most interesting part to, to achieve this high level of democracy. We should not reinvent the wheel. We are at a very dangerous moment in time. Today, elected people, socialist elected people, are trapped between two movements, one coming from uh, upstairs, um, top-down uh, approach that you can find in, in Greece, in Portugal, in Italy, with all those bankers uh, taking the power and uh, uh, giving instructions to the government, saying that the uh, politics are not in charge and that the banking sector is in charge. This is a major danger. And we have to, to, to fight against that. But we also have to protest against uh, what uh, Van Rompuy, Barroso say, because they have no democratic legitimacy. They have been appointed, they have been put there, and now they are going to, to give lessons to members of parliament. Today, we just took a decision in Belgium about the budget for 2012, 13, and 14. But I would not accept as a socialist person to have to come back to my budget just because of uh, criteria that have been defined by the banks, by the banking sector. So where it becomes dangerous is when citizens badly informed or disinformed by the media, media that are also working for important financial groups, so when the citizens consider that the enemy is uh, the politics, is the elected people, but what are they going, how are they going to replace the elected people? So we need to reconcile both uh, dimensions, and this has to be done through education, citizenship education, and maybe we also have to tell the media to um, do something in favor of uh, uh, citizen education. We have to make sure that people would be interested in other things, not only what is going wrong. We have to try and uh, turn people into activists, activists of solidarity and values. And we should not 
um, say that the citizen has no uh, defects, has no problems, and that the elected person, that the elected representative is the bad person. Again, what are we going to do? What are we going to propose to replace elected representatives? We have the Socialist International Movement, and we have our song. We sing that song on the 1st of May. But you know, bankers are not singing that song. But uh, we have to continue on that road. We have really to show solidarity. Antonio, do you want to respond, and especially also um, touch again on the issue of how can we incorporate the civic movements? Para ver cómo podemos incorporar también los movimientos. Uh, I think there are two questions in our discussion. Firstly, who decides with uh, what uh, legitimacy and uh, before whom? When the European institutions are kidnapped by Merkel and uh, when they adopt positions um, that affect Portugal or Spain, how can I accept the political options of uh, Ms. Merkel? Who decides in, on our behalf as Europeans hasn't been elected by the Europeans? Uh, it has been elected uh, for re national reasons. Uh, and if it hasn't been elected by the Europeans, we haven't got the possibility of doing what is normal in democracy, to vote in favor or to vote against. So there is a problem of legitimacy. Secondly, how do you elect those that are in the ECB, who took the decision? How can we ask those who have taken the decision to be accountable? And the question is the same. If the elections are national because the governments are nationals, and if the most important decisions at the European level are taken by the government representatives, that means that Europe will be always in the second level. So there is a democratic deficit because people are affected by decisions, but they can't decide, they cannot sanction, they cannot assess, and they cannot put forward another option. And I come back to the need for the socialists to have a political program, a clear political program. And here I come back to the issue of a political option. We have a crisis. What is the current answer to the crisis? Austerity. And if it doesn't work, more austerity. But if we ask those that are at this meeting, they will answer there is another way of economic growth, of employment promotion that will give an answer to concrete problems. But why don't we choose that option? Well, we don't choose it because obviously the European construction rules do not allow national political options that will change the options that are adopted at a European level. Therefore, what can we do at a European level to change. In my opinion, that change is necessary and urgent. And I say that very carefully. This Europe, as we know it, will last very little. It has finished. We need clear political options. And to conclude, I will give you an example, and I will put under the form of a question. Do you know any central bank that uh, can't issue banknotes? Well, our monetary union, 
Malta, we also call economic uh, union. Does it have any economy in it? No, it has a monetary policy, but it's got 17 different fiscal policies uh, and the economy hasn't got its place and if it hasn't got its place we cannot efficiently give an answer to this crisis in Europe. Maybe we should add one thing which makes Belgium different from other countries apart from Luxembourg. Voting in our country is compulsory. It means that we have this civic uh, commitment which is, which is required from the citizens. And we could wonder maybe to, to give back uh, a, a voice to the citizens, maybe we, could, we should reinstall this obligation to vote today in uh, the right-wing movement, people are saying we should put an end to that uh, obligation to, to vote. People are mature enough to know what is good for them and not good for them. But, you know, it's thanks to this civil movement that, uh, um, other, that, that a few governments failed. And it's because of them that Papandreou and others failed. So I think we are always going to be faced with uh, the problem of citizens that will consider us not to be uh, the relevant people. I hope that we will still be there, but we as socialists, we will still defend the people who are the most in need. We're going to defend them, but we will also be the first targets, the first to fail. And the uh, austerity of Socrates, of course, was uh, punished, and now you're going to be faced with another ultra-liberal austerity in Portugal. Is it what we want? Uh, um, is it what is going to lead to the happiness of citizens? It's a question towards all of you. Uh, to, to all of you, we, I mean, we had one working group looking at public services, and the working group came out with a clear call: they want renewed engagement for well-funded public services. Are we going to see this? Yep. Well, well I, I, I only can say that I really agree with it. Uh, and, and, and what we have seen in the, in the last decades, that indeed uh, a lot of the public services were to some extent uh, not immediately under control of the uh, government or local government. And I think that, that uh, um, looking to the results of that, that we have to, uh, to go back to, uh, to the original ideas and, and, and giving the, uh, the governments and the local governments uh, much more power over those public services. So I agree with that. Thank you. Carlos, public services, can we afford them? Or are we just closing all our libraries? The question, well, we've been able to have them until now. Why can't we keep having them, firstly? Secondly, public services. It's what guarantees human dignity. Thousands of people couldn't be alive if they didn't have uh, health public services in my country, we face loads of uh, problems. In Catalonia, they've closed uh, 40, 54 emergency uh, centers. Uh, and now in many hospitals, they charge you if you stay with your family in the hospital. In uh, other regions, uh, they can lose their uh, social security um, benefits. Until now, we've been able to have them. Why? now not. Why? Because uh, some people in Chicago are speculating with the sovereign debt because they're speculating with the food. Who decides? Uh, briefly, when we talk about economy, can you ask yourself why we keep with the uh, tax haven? Why? Because uh, the governments allow that. I forgot what I was going to say. Why we keep tax haven and why the, we don't have a uh, tax uh, um, unity in Europe, uh, why the Netherlands um, has got uh, uh, less taxes than in Spain. Uh, what we do is to globalize what uh, we want to globalize. Why don't we globalize uh, the health uh, services or rights? Or We have to answer those questions if we 
start giving answers to those questions, you'll find why the public services aren't uh, uh, profitable. The situation in Greece, where are those that signed the several agreements uh, that uh, led Greece uh, to a disaster? Why, when uh, uh, people are suffering, why whilst those are, are suffering, the people who signed those agreements haven't been sanctioned. That is shameful. We don't, we're not living a uh, um, changing period. Uh, it's very, very dramatic. Thank you. Antonio, is there a realistic future funded public services? I think yes, but we have to change a lot. We have to ask ourselves why we got here. The reasons why we got here cannot be the solution for the new paradigm for get out of this crisis. We're not all aware at the same time of uh, the importance uh, of getting out together of this crisis uh, in countries like mine or in Spain or in Greece or in Italy. We ask uh, superhuman sacrifices uh, um, and there are other countries in Europe that are not feeling the crisis. And uh, we should understand what is the problem that we have in our family in Europe. The period of full employment or the period of uh, um, exponential economic growth has come to an end. We've seen that after the Second World War. So obviously, yes, we have to see how we can finance uh, public services, but uh, before answering that question, we should answer other questions. Uh, firstly, is it possible to regulate uh, politically uh, markets, yes or no? Uh, the answer is yes, it is possible, but uh, world leaders do not want to do it. If we have a look to the conclusions of uh, uh, the first meeting of G20 in 2008 after the subprime uh, crisis. And if we go and verify how many of those conclusions uh, have been implemented, we'll see that none of them. For example, Carlos uh, have, uh, has said, uh, talk about the end of uh, uh, tax havens. I agree with him, but we ask ourselves, why don't we put an end to tax havens? Uh, the right-wing government in my country has uh, established uh, uh, tax on uh, revenue. And when I ask them and when I put forward proposals uh, to demand uh, solidarity to with the dividends, uh, with the capital, they answer that uh, capital moves, uh, that capital can go somewhere else, and that people stay. And that is the problem. We have uh, an economic and social organization that protects capital and speculation capital, not the, uh, economic capital. And we continue to use very nice words, and we continue to say that people are more, more important. We need to change, and uh, the big challenge for us uh, is not only to change uh, the words, uh, but to change uh, in our action. And that is uh, the main issue. We only govern in three countries of the European Union. Why 
only in three. Why people in a moment of crisis, of unemployment, uh, why do they rather vote to, to the right, uh, to the conservatives? Uh, why? Well, it's because we cannot accept uh, that we are something when we are in the opposition and something very different when we are in power. There is a big difference. I, I will conclude. And uh, what I would like to add uh, is that d that difference doesn't take place in one government. We have to act globally in Europe, uh, changing, as I said uh, before. Thank you. That really brings me to one of the other issues working groups looked at this afternoon. It's basically mobilizing social democracy in Europe. Why are we only in power in very few countries? And they come up with the thesis that we need stronger links between our think tanks, our new movements and political parties. So we need basically new ideas how to address problems in our nation states, but also problems within the European Union. How would we be able to, to do it, to, to get you know, the civic movement or think tanks, to, to get them to put their ideas to politicians and political parties? Job, do you want to? Yes, um, um, I think in, at, at least in the Netherlands we are, um, uh, we are working at that. We, we, we have an, uh, uh, an, an important uh, think tank together with our um, party and in, um, at the moment, they are working very hard in order to try to uh, to to ma to make new ideas um, based upon our values and looking into the future. And I think that's very important. And uh, at the moment, there is a, a big discussion in our country organized by this uh, think tank, uh, and I'm looking forward to the results of it. Uh, we have a lot of discussions in the country together with a lot of people. Uh, and, and, and the most important elements are that we are looking once again to, this, to the security of people, the security uh, which we need, uh, security for jobs, security for pensions, and those are the most important elements uh, which has, has to be done uh, in, in the years to come. So I think that those think tanks, we, we really need them. Um, um, they are also not only uh, within one country, but we also have um, together with other countries, they, they find each other, and I, I'm looking forward to the results of it, and I think that we are working hard on it, and, uh, well, I'm looking forward to that. Thank you. André, could you also say something maybe about European institutions? Me. When we say that we have to reassure people, security, well, it's basically because today the right wing and the conservatives, well, they give the feeling that they're ge going to bring solutions to the citizens. But this is not true. We also have to prove, we also have to show that we can bring solutions to the people. We have to move from nice words to practical actions, and we have to do so as quickly as possible. Today, uh, the citizens need to have uh, a house, they need to have a job, they need to take care of their children and to provide them with a good education. We can only do so if we are not uh, individualistic, if we move out of that individualistic approach. We have to promote the sense of uh, um, common interest, collective interest. It is a bit uh, as a paradox because we as socialists and social democrats, we have developed social protection schemes in nearly all countries. And in some of them today, we have far right governments. We have selfishness. We have an increase in nationalism, which is, of course, against the very idea of the European uh, project. So if we want to provide a good answer, we need to be organized. We have to work together in a very organized way. We have to 
put together the uh, the old movements like trade unions or mutual movements and the new movements, uh, the civil society, the organizations which defend the consumers. So we have to bring everything together in a very structured way with assemblies. We want to, to exert pressure on the governments. That's the only way we, ha we, we can follow. We, as representatives of as elected people, we also have to be more rigorous than any others as far as the uh, management of public services is concerned. We have to be uh, brave enough to question what is not working. We have to dare and change what is not working. We should not add structures to already existing structures. People want to have simple things. We are in a so-called zapping society. And we have to take on board that new environment. But we need to be very clear, very practical in our answers. And we have to answer quickly. This will be possible if we are united, which brings me back to the first question. We have to go beyond our national and regional parties. We need to have a strong structure at a higher level, the European level, because this is the, the current world in which we live. Surely, but slowly run, running out. I can have a quick answer. How do you think, Safe. from your perspective, Meaning. would you be able to, to get your ideas into political parties, into the political process? Firstly, political parties need to establish a dialogue with the citizens. If there isn't such a dialogue, the system won't work. Secondly, political parties can consult the issues. The think tanks, if they're not open to citizens' participation and to listen to citizens, it, it won't work because they will generate a new elite and they will continue to take decisions marginally. So you need to create a sort of a circle where citizens are consulted and where these expert groups are open to citizens. And I'm sorry, I will insist. A liquid uh, democracy, democracy 4.0, so that citizens can choose to have a weight and to participate uh, in the decision-making process, because if not, uh, they will be isolated. Thank you. Antonio, how can we mobilize social democracy? How can we infuse new, I new ideas? What's the best way forward? with causes. People will mobilize when they believe in something, when they believe that it is possible that through those causes uh, their lives can change for better. I think that people live now in fear, with uncertainty, with the lack of hope, and when they look towards the demo democratic institutions, when they try to find answers, these institutions do not provide answers. They tell you that uh, you need to get poorer to pay your debts, uh, that you need to be poor to be able to get out of uh, the crisis. This is not understood by citizens, and I cannot accept it. What we need are parties that are closer to citizens and less uh, to the state. If uh, we observe uh, the traditional functions of parties, we will see that uh, in their majority, parties have got a function to select uh, political personnel to occupy positions uh, at a regional and national level. But the uh, function that is uh, closer to citizenship, that function, uh, parties are losing it. So it's not the same in all of Europe, obviously, but we need to understand that parties need uh, to open themselves. They need to reactivate their functions, because obviously 
we can understand it very well from what Carlos said. Uh, citizens uh, look uh, at uh, the parties as representatives uh, of the state, but not as representative of uh, uh, citizens in the state institutions, and that is a fundamental change. Stéphane Essel said, show your indignation. But he also insisted upon the fact that we also have to show our commitment. So, okay, we have to show our indignation. This is normal. We have to do so. But it's better to commit ourselves because commitment means shared responsibilities, means that we make an effort to understand. It means that we try to be informed that we work through structures, through associations, to achieve changes, to introduce reforms, because it's better to have a reform than uh, a miracle that will never happen. So we need to be more committed today than ever. I'm really sorry, we have to wrap up now. I want to say a really big thank you to the panel for, for your comments this afternoon for the really inspiring, interesting debate. And I also want to say a big, big thank you to everybody who worked so hard this afternoon in the working group, came up with the messages. It was a great afternoon. I've got um, a few housekeeping announcements to make. I will now hand over to Philip for the closing speeches. Um, but before I do this, just to let you know, after the closing speeches, we have um, a really wonderful and funky concert. And my advice to you is just follow the music. Thank you very much.